Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 Update, April 13, 2020. Today's topic, can I become reinfected? All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for all reporting. All our videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Here are the current trajectories. The United States is now closing in on 600,000 cases. Everyone else seems to be flattening. If we zoom in on Canada here, we'll see Canada is definitely flattening compared to the other countries. Here are the reported cases per million. This is great news for Canada as we have ducked under the United Kingdom now and we're the lowest reported cases per million population at, at uh, this point in time. Here are the percentage of deaths. Italy is leading 12.83%. United Kingdom hot on its heels at 12.78%. Germany low at 2.42%. Canada at 3%. Here are the actual numbers, the top numbers being the most recent day. The subsequent numbers following it are the subsequent days. Take home points. United Kingdom has had a bad week. They have had a lot of death, unfortunately. United States is now over 4% and Canada is now right at 3%. Here are the deaths per million population. We can see here we have ducked under the United States and hopefully we're heading right for Germany. Here are the estimated reproduction numbers over a seven-day period, and you will see that every country is now less than one, which means we're still getting new cases every day, but fewer and fewer each day. Great news. So what that means in another way of saying it is Italy, Germany, and Spain are now on the downslope. Canada, United States, UK, and France have now come over the crest, and now we're on the downslope as well. Here are the new cases per day. Italy, Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada. I can safely say that everybody seems to now be starting to flatten. Here are the daily deaths. Italy, definitely flattening. Spain, again, definitely flattening. Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada, who's under everybody else. New cases per day, Canada 1,343 today. Here's Canada versus South Korea and United Kingdom. You can see that we are slowly dropping down, but not near where South Korea is, and but we're nowhere near where the United Kingdom was at this point in time either. Here are the provincial cases of COVID-19. Here's Canada in total, over 25,000 cases now. There's Alberta and BC, both flattened out and very close to each other. There is Ontario with about 7,500 cases, and there's Quebec with about 13,500. Here are the rest of the provinces. Nova Scotia is certainly leading the way and gaining more and more cases. Saskatchewan, Newfoundland, and Manitoba are in second, third, and fourth. Here are the cumulative deaths. Canada, closing in on 800. There's Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, and now you can see Quebec has diverged from Ontario and they have more deaths now than Ontario. So a big question around dinner tables over this Easter weekend. Everybody wants to know. People email me. Can I get reinfected with this? Well, after you're infected with a viral pathogen, your body mounts an immune response. Now, luckily, our immune system is smart. It remembers past infections by creating memory cells. These memory cells have the ability to rapidly make antibodies, IgG antibodies, that will attack the virus if it's seen again. They bind to the virus, they neutralize it before it gets into the cells and starts to replicate. So it's great news. Now, the immune response to a viral infection starts with an initial exposure. Then you get a primary immune response. You make antibodies. They're not that great at attacking the virus. They're pretty good, but it get, takes care of things. But then when you get exposed a second time, our secondary immune response is much more robust. We make antibodies that bind better to that virus, and we make way more of them. So do we make antibodies to coronaviruses? Well, absolutely we do. Now, severe acute respiratory syndrome, or SARS-CoV, was an infection that was around in 2003, in August in particular, and it affected large parts of Asia, but also Canada as well. Now, what we found out from SARS is that there's two types of antibodies that were made, an IgM antibody that actually peaked earlier, but also went away earlier, and then an IgG antibody, which is the memory antibody that kind of peaked around anywhere four to six weeks and then persisted on. The next question you ask is, okay, we make these antibodies, do they persist over time? The answer is yes. 
Antibodies level, uh, antibody levels generally peak a year or two after the infection. They start to decline, but they're still detectable. In fact, IgG levels in SARS from 2003 remained at significantly high levels until 2015. That's almost 12 years. Okay, And so what we know here is that the initial purple uh, line here is the initial viremia. This is where the viral levels are very high. You get initial IgM response followed by an IgG response, and this level stays high for a long period of time, up to, as I said, 12 years. So is there anybody who might have trouble making antibodies? Well, unfortunately, there are. Okay, People who are born with immune system abnormalities who don't make antibodies very well, and there are some people out there like that, may have trouble. And also some people taking medications that could potentially suppress the immune system may have a hard time making antibodies to SARS-CoV-2. Now, there's some limitations of antibody testing as well. And this is kind of a busy graph, okay? But basically, um, this is the uh, SARS-CoV-2 RNA level. There's your IgM levels and your IgG levels, okay? And the problem is if you test too early, if you test in this window period here before IgM levels start to go up and before IgG levels, you won't see any antibodies at all, so you'll miss it. So that's a limitation of antibody testing. You have to be a bit patient about it and wait, okay? So a primer on the antibodies to SARS-CoV-2. IgM antibodies, as you know, as you've seen, they appear before IgG antibodies, and they're in the early stages of an infection. Now, as physicians, when we see IgM antibodies, we know there's been a recent infection or there's an ongoing active infection. So these are good clues about something ongoing or very recent. When we see an IgG antibodies, they appear after the IgM antibodies, they persist for much longer than IgM antibodies, and they really provide us evidence of a past infection. So there's two reasons it's important to look for antibodies. The first, because it provides evidence of a prior exposure or an infection. And that might mean freedom for some people. And the second is because it provides evidence of a recent infection. And the reason that that's important is because viral detection with nasal swabs isn't perfect. In fact, up to 30% of these nasal swabs might be negative in patients who really have the infection. So if the nasal swab is negative, but the IgM levels are all positive, you can assume that they actually have the infection. So it's another way of checking. So can I become reinfected? Answer, the overwhelming majority of people will mount a sufficient immune response to prevent reinfection with SARS-CoV-2. That's great news. All right, let's get on to John Bird Murdoch's graphs from the Financial Times. Again, there's six of these. First three are total numbers of deaths and cases. And the second three are the daily average number of cases and deaths over a seven-day period. Take-home points here. United States, as we mentioned, is approaching 600,000 cases. Turkey, unfortunately, is still battling a very severe outbreak. Austria, Australia, and Norway have all flattened and flattened early. Here is the number of deaths now. This is the total number of deaths. Take-home points here. United States is now the highest number of deaths, over 20,000. Australia is still looking good, and the United Kingdom is still trending just above Italy. And here are the subnational total number of deaths. Take on points, New York State is now over 10,000 deaths. Here are the daily number of cases. Take on points, the United States, the United Kingdom may be peaking. The new Fab Four, Austria, Norway, Australia, and New Zealand are all coming down. And look at China there, grinding along over to the right. Here are the average number of deaths as on a daily basis. United States, United Kingdom continue to slowly climb, but the peak, it looks like it's in sight. Australia, Norway, and Austria sorry, are definitely success stories, and Canada is definitely flattening. And here are the average number of deaths in the subnational regions. New York daily deaths look to be peaking. London, England also looks to be peaking, but... One question we have to ask here is, is this an Easter weekend effect? Will we see more reported cases come Tuesday after Easter Monday? So remember, folks, it's still now more important than ever to hold the line. Hopefully, every stayed home and didn't go visit with families this weekend. Again, go to Collins Clothiers, get one of these awesome t-shirts or hoodies. They support small businesses and frontline workers in your areas. Go to CollinsClothiers.com, click on Canada Strong. Remember, folks, do your part, flatten the curve, stay home. Stay safe. Please, please, safe. Speaking moistly. 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 Speaking moistly.
years apart, speaking moistly. These are the things, the things we know. Keep two meters apart, what I have heard. From medical experts, these are the things, the things we know. To prevent you from speaking moistly. Speaking moistly. Keep two meters apart, speaking moistly. Speaking moistly Keep two meters apart Speaking moistly Speaking moistly Keep two meters apart Speaking moistly Speaking moistly Keep two meters apart Speaking moistly oh, What a terrible image